we're going to be going into four different effects that we're going to be making using fractal noise as the main driver of everything. With that out the way, let's hop straight into After Effects and get cracking. So the first effect we're going to be looking at is a transition using fractal noise. So if you start off in After Effects, and of course I'm using 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second, because why not? I'm going to start off by creating a new layer and calling it Fractal Noise. And then I'm going to go ahead and add, funny enough, I'm going to add Fractal Noise. So now that we have the effect added to the layer, what we're going to go ahead and do is open the Transform and we are going to increase the scale a good bit. And now if we play with the contrast, you can see that we have some pretty big blotches. And this kind of just depends on the results you want and the sizes of the blotches, but I like them fairly big. So I'm just going to put them at 450. Now that we've scaled it up to our liking, I'm going to go ahead and decrease the complexity to about two so we can get some pretty soft and nice big blobs. This depends on the look you want. If you want a more textured look, you can leave the complexity up, but I really like the look of this. Um, blotchy effect that we're gonna get. So now the only thing that we're gonna animate with this is the brightness that you can see up here. So if I slide it up and down you can see we get some blobs that bleed into each other and that is essentially gonna be our transition. So starting at the beginning we can set the brightness to minus 100 and that should make the screen all black and then if we keyframe the brightness and move forward let's say two seconds for this example and then you can just drag it up until you see it's completely white. So at about 87 already it's it's there, you can put it to 100 if you want, it's not gonna make any difference other than the timing of it. And then if we go ahead and play it back, you can see that it slowly fades in and out. So we can add some easing to that if we want, as always, sexy speed is the way to go. So if we play this back real quick, you can see it kinda just fades in an interesting pattern. Now to preview how this effect actually works, we can go ahead and create a new layer and we're just gonna name this test. I'm actually just going to change the color of it just so we can see what we're doing. I'm just some bright color. So now if we go ahead and use the fractal noise as a track mat for our test layer and click this little icon to switch it to a luma mat which basically uses the black and white values to decide what to show and what not to show. And there you can see that's pretty much the transition and you can go ahead and change the look of it on the go if you want to because you have all the information in the layer. So you can go ahead and increase the contrast if you want for some more drastic effects. You can go ahead and change the scale to change how big you want the blotches to be. Now if you want to use this over and over again without having to make a fractal noise layer every time, you can always go into your fractal noise layer and then add a color key and select the white or the black value. It doesn't really matter that much because you can always just reverse it and then just drag it up, add some feathering to it just to get a little bit of a smoother result. And then you can see here now we have it on a transparent background and then you can just go ahead and render it out as a transparent file in MOV format or whatever. That was all for the first effect. So now let's delete these two layers and hop straight into the second effect. So for the second effect, we're gonna be creating a topo map. So what we're gonna be doing is creating a new layer once again, as per usual. And we're just gonna name this topo map because we're gonna be doing everything on one layer, which is so nice and you can even go ahead and save these as presets so you can always make them again and again quickly so if you go ahead and add fractal noise as our base because that's what we're working with today and then we're going to do a posterize very important don't add posterize time it's not going to do nothing for us we're going to add posterize just posterize and then lastly we are going to add find edges so now you can already see kind of the basis of this and you can play with the posterize that's basically going to dictate how much detail you have in your topographical map but other than that the rest is going to be done up in the fractal noise layer so i'm going to go and decrease the complexity to two just so we get some simpler results to look at it's just not as crazy and detailed and from there you can go ahead and play with the scale now you pretty much have your topographical map we want to animate it of course so what we're going to go ahead and do is add an expression to the evolution we're just going to alt click the clock and then we're going to type time times 10 just depending on how quick you want it. And there we go, we have an animated topographical map in probably about like 10 seconds. Super easy, and you can always just go ahead and save all of this as a preset, so if you select all of these, and that goes for most effects really. You go into animation and then save animation preset, and then you can save it for later use, so you don't have to go through this process, although it is super easy. But as I said, the posterize basically dictates the amount of detail, so if you decrease it, you can see how many more layers of depth we get. So let's say this is a pretty neat result that we like at 16. Now, if we want this on a transparent background, we can go ahead and add a color key again, and then we can select the background color, which is white. And then you just want to up the uh, key color a little bit. And then lastly, just add a fill color just to get some of that contrast back and just change it to white or whatever color you want it to be. And boom, 
a transparent topographical map that you can overlay on anything you want. That was pretty much it for this effect. So now we're going to delete this layer and hop straight into the third effect, which is going to be a glitch effect. So once again, fractal noise, and we're just going to name this and add it to our layer. And here we want to go into the noise type, change it to block. You can play with the scale however you want the blocks to look. The only thing is you want to do is definitely increase the contrast. And then I usually like to take my um, complexity down a little bit. Two usually works pretty good. And then in the transform, if you unclick the uniform scaling, you have way more control over the look of your glitch effect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to first, we're going to animate the evolution. So once again, we alt click it and then we're going to do time times 500. So now we have this effect and as you can see, it's very smooth. So it doesn't really look that glitchy. So just to add a little bit more randomness to it, you can open the evolution options and keyframe the random seed and just add time times 10, for example. And now you can already see that it looks way more random and it just adds to the look of the glitchiness. Now we're gonna of course apply this to a text layer so we can hide this fractal noise layer. And if we add some text and we can just do glitch and we are just gonna center this up and then we are gonna add displacement map. Now you wanna go into the displacement displacement map layer and select our fractal noise layer and then enable effects and masks. Now you can already see how it's affecting our layer, basically just reading the black and white values and applying that to our layer. Looks pretty crazy. You can increase and decrease these sliders as you please. And if we go into our fractal noise layer and change the scale of it, you can go, you can see how it immediately affects our text. So now that we have this super glitchy, super glitchy, we can add a couple more things to it. So in our fractal noise layer, we can add a couple of masks to dictate where we want the glitchiness to be in our letters. This is a super clean and easy way of deciding if you only want it as an accent to some of the letters and not use it and not apply it to all the text. So as you can see, it, it's only applying the displacement to those selected areas. That's it for the third effect. So for our third effect, we're gonna be creating a super neat gradient. So we're gonna be creating a new solid and we're just gonna name this gradient. And then we are going to add a fractal noise as always, a uh, false box blur. And then we're going to add colorama to get some crazy colors in there. For now, I'm just going to disable the colorama just so we don't get too confused and crazy. I want to increase the scale of this a little bit just so we get a nicer looking gradient in my opinion. And then I'm going to increase the contrast a good bit and I'm going to decrease the complexity. I want something that looks fairly smooth, but we're also going to assist that smooth with the, with the false box blur. I'm just going to go and add a little bit of blur to it so we get some pretty smooth results. And then we can turn on our colorama to see what that does. As you can see, we get a lot of crazy colors and we can pick whatever colors we want. They have a bunch of different presets, but I'm gonna go in and create a pretty simple color palette in a purplish type of hue. And the good thing about this, you can go and you can switch the order of everything, get the results that you really want. If we drag up the blur ready, so you can see the colors start to fade in with each other a lot more. And if we just change this color to a light pink, maybe it will look just a little bit better. So that fits pretty good. Now we have a static gradient, which is one thing, but you can animate this either by using the evolution options and adding an expression like we did before and set this to about 20. Then you get a pretty nice smooth animation going on here. That's pretty much all for the gradient. We can do a little bit more to it. Let's say if we add a levels effect to it and just drag this above the colorama and then you can use these sliders to pinpoint the, the brightness and the blackness values of everything. So you can just customize your gradient even more through that. It's nice to play around with for certain results. But one thing I'd love to add to this is some noise. So I'm gonna add noise HLS auto and I'm gonna select green and animation speed 24, that is perfect. And green size, I'm just gonna decrease that to about 0.2 and then I'm gonna increase the lightness to eight. Now we get some super nice looking gradients, especially with the noise, which just adds to it. And that's pretty much all for this tutorial. We've covered how to make a transition using fractal noise, how you can create a topographical topographical map with fractal noise, how to make a text glitch effect or anything else really. I mean, you can apply that to anything with the displacement map. And last but not least, we've created a super sweet animated gradient, which is a lot more customizable than the four color gradient and also a lot easier to work with than the four color gradient 
in After Effects. I hope you learned something new and maybe just sparked that interest to go and play with some of the effects. Fractal Noise is a super powerful effect and you really need to play around with it to see what you can create. And the good thing about After Effects is you can stack so many effects to create super unique and really awesome looking effects. That is all for me guys. I just want to say thank you and um, see you again next week.